I refuse to admit that there's a bad Columbo. An episode that would fail to reward the dedicated fan even after repeat viewings. And nothing proves this point more than today's Echoes of Columbo, an entry universally derided for bad acting, an uninteresting mystery, a distasteful final clue, and one of the series' worst titles, Murder in Malibu. Before beginning my research, I had seen this a total of one time. Popular consensus says it's one of the very worst, and by Columbo standards, it's not great. Aspiring actor, sportsman, thrill seeker, and serial womanizer Wayne Jennings courts middle aged romance novelist Teresa Gorin. We assume mostly for her money. Not to mention all those trips back and forth to the bank. But when her battle axe sister, Jess McCurdy, threatens him with exposure, Jennings kills Teresa for a million dollar insurance policy. That's fairly impressive. A pretty basic plot. But there's a twist. Jennings only shot Teresa's already dead body, so at least momentarily the episode becomes a whodunit. Veteran Columbo writer Jackson Gillis loves doing this. In fact, the last one he wrote was Last Salute to the Commodore, which also sets up an obvious killer, only to reveal it wasn't him. Hey, wait a minute. Yeah, that's the same fireplace. In fact, that's the same house. And that's not the only thing recycled here. Jess McCurdy drives the same model BMW as Oscar Finch from the same season's Agenda for Murder. Columbo wanting to sit in the killer's fancy car and reading the mileage? That's from Etude in Black. In one scene, the killer is staying above the garage, like fellow killers Roger Stanford and Eddie Kane. Or opening at a book signing, just like in The Conspirators. Or swinging around on the lift, like the director's chair in Murder, Smoke, and Shadows. Or the Union 76 gas station sign. Yeah, they drive by a similar sign in the greenhouse jungle. Okay, I'll stop. There's this uneasy sense of repetition throughout Murder in Malibu. Honey, don't bother me now. Don't bother me now. How many times do we see people arriving at and leaving Teresa's house? How often is Columbo looking for a place to put his eggshells? Would you get rid of these shells? Don't I like to get rid of these eggshells? Is there an ashtray here, sir? I'd like to get rid of these eggshells. Cars driving through this intersection? People watching this TV interview? Women fawning over Jennings? People going up and down these stairs? Identical bloodstains on the corner scrubs? Wheeling bodies by? Ugly cardigan sweaters? Repetition is actually the theme of the episode, which pays off at the end. I gotta go see a sister again. The victim gets shot twice? killer gets caught twice. The quality of these shows often comes down to the caliber of the antagonist. And Wayne Jennings is unconventional. He's not the suave elite killer, more a wannabe seeking fame and fortune. Andrew Stevens's performance is jarring at first. There are other things in life besides tennis, Lieutenant. It's only a game. But so is Brenda Vaccaro's. Telling you that she realized what a damn fool she'd been. And even Janet Margolin's. <sighs> They're the most beautiful petunias I've ever seen. It's odd because some of the other performances are more what we'd expect from the series. Peter Falk plays it relatively straight for this point in the show. Floyd Levine is good as the dour Lieutenant Schultz. Ben Slack's coroner is pretty funny. And even the cable guys do a good job. The oft-criticized main cast all have long Hollywood careers. Margolin, for instance, is great as the prosecutor in Ghostbusters 2. And Andrew Stevens is a prolific producer, including even a couple Steven Seagal films. As soon as I become head of my own studio, I'm gonna make you VP of Business Affairs. Oh yeah, sure you will. You wanna bet? So you have to conclude that they gave the performances the director and producers asked of them. It's interesting to note how many of the cast and crew also participated in another Levinson and Link production, Murder, She Wrote, around at the same time. The whole episode has that hokey Murder, She Wrote quality to it, an odd, exaggerated atmosphere where the characters are comfortable cliches rather than anything grounded in reality. Given this, the poor script, and the recycled elements, you have to wonder if the show was short on material and budget and had to crank one out on the cheap. Earlier this season, Uneasy Lies the Crown was a rejected script from the 70s, so who knows? Much of this has sounded critical, which I regret, and a lot of these shortcomings make the episode almost fascinating. Because despite all that, Murder in Malibu is never boring, it doesn't lag, the plot and characters are always in motion. Use this script on any other show, Murder She Wrote for instance, and it would make for a good mystery and above average viewing. Sometimes our biases about what a Columbo episode should be can ruin our enjoyment of what it actually is. And there are good moments. The coroner constantly grossing Columbo out, for instance, or Jess not believing he's a cop. What's his name? 
Stevens, for all his flaws, succeeds in making Jennings a detestable character. Seeing him battered at the end is a real treat. You bastard! The music is also exceptional, as it always is with composer Patrick Williams. As usual, he works up distinct and memorable themes that you'll catch yourself humming afterward. With just a little more polish to the script and performances, this could have been excellent. So no, I wouldn't say this is the worst Columbo, not by a long shot. A lot of Columbaneers might skip this one based on its reputation. I always did, for years. But next time, give it a watch. After all, we should be emulating the lieutenant, keeping an eye out for the little things that make even murder in Malibu worthwhile. The petunias. Well, that is the color you wanted, isn't it?